Welcome to State Television Campaign Western Armenia broadcast for today. Epistemic Dissonance of the Armenian Nation, Krum Harut Arakelian. The eighth wonder of the ancient world may contain an intact tomb. The release of Armenian prisoners should be a precondition for holding COP29, RP Avatisyan. Sons of Western Armenia, Jirair Zortyan. Russia has opportunities and things to do regarding the return of Armenian prisoners of war. Atak Beglarian. Climate destabilization in Western Armenia. WTA 500 Elena Avanesan started with the victory. The 4th century was a breakthrough period in Armenia's history which still influences the nation's state of mind. In 301, during the reign of King Tordat III, under the influence of Grigory the Illuminator, the adoption of Christianity as a state religion was a turning point that marked the beginning of a new era. However, this change created a deep cognitive dissonance and a conflict between the old native roots and the new Christian teaching. Until the 4th century, Armenians professed the Armenian faith, which was connected with nature and the worship of Ditzer, it means gods. Until the 4th century, Armenians practiced the Armenian faith associated with the nature and the worship of gods. The imposition of Christianity, however, brought about a radical shift, destroying the ancient temples and suppressing the old faith. The new religion was called the Armenian Church, which was a change for many people. The internal conflict between the old traditions and the new faith left a lasting impact on the Armenian nation. Christianity is perceived as a part of the nation's identity, but the longing for the old tradition is still present. Haigan Miabanutun, seeking to reunite Armenians with their pre-Christian spiritual heritage, sees the resolution of these contradictions through a return to the ancestral faith, which can restore harmony in the nation. In the 1st century BC, King Antiochus I of Komagen built a sanctuary in Western Armenia like no other in occupied Western Armenia. His unexplored tomb on Mount Nemrut may tell us more about ancient burial and religious customs. On the top of Mount Nemrut is what some call the eighth wonder of the world, a religious shrine consisting of ten colossal statues surrounding the mountain where the tomb of old king is said to lie. These impressive stone structures are among the most important evidences of the religious and funerary rituals of the ancient society. Comagenian society emerged from the combination of Greek and Persian culture, which was typical of the Hellenistic period. Antiochus I, one of the most famous kings of Comagen, ruled from 17 up to 46. He tried not to participate in the conflict between the Romans and Parthians. Unfortunately, Antiochus' first successors were not so successful, and a few later after the Roman Empire absorbed the region. Today, Comagen is famous for its extraordinary monument on top of Mount Nemrut, built by Antiochus I. The name Nemrut is derived from the name of King Nimrod, which in Bible means lucky hunter. During her interview with News AM, Pia Vetistian, an international human rights defender on strategic trial issues, Consider the application submitted to the UN Special Rapporteur on Torture Important, which aims to prevent possible torture in future. This application is not only a new landmark in the framework of international law, but is also of great importance for the cases in the European Court of Human Rights. It is necessary to combine legal and political efforts, raise awareness and continuously work with all possible international structures to ensure the release of Armenian prisoners, she noted. Jirai Zorian was a Bohemian artist and one of the important figures of the Los Angeles creative community. He became a more famous for guest house Zorian Rancho and for his annual parties organized there. After the genocide, Jirai found a refugee in the United States, leaving Western Armenia. He received a scholarship to study the arts at Yale University and after graduation moved to the west coast of the country. He bought land, built a ranch, grew vegetables, kept pets and used scraps to create furniture and artwork. The interlocutor of Rabarak was Artak Beglarian, former state minister of Artsakh. Artak Beglarian referred to the issue of the repatriation of Armenian prisoners of war discussed between the presidents of Russia and Azerbaijan, as well as the possibilities of the return of Armenians to Artsakh. 
Megalarian noted that until now there have been many petitions, but none of them have yet brought concrete results. According to Megalarian, the return of Artsakh Armenians to Artsakh can be realized only when there are international collective guarantees, for example, the assumption of collective responsibility by the UN Security Council and the exclusion of military and administrative rule by Baku. In this case, according to Beglarian, it will be possible to provide long-term security guarantees if the international administration is ensured. Otherwise, he notes that all discussions are just pointless conversations that are just a waste of time. Beglarian concludes that it will be possible to ensure the return of Armenians of Artsakh and the protection of their rights only in case of specific and clear actions. From the beginning of August, unusually high temperatures are observed in the region of Western Armenia, which affects the local flora and fauna. In the monuments of Western Armenia, known for their unique flora, thirst and drought have become a major problem. A number of rivers and lakes have dried up significantly, which has threatened the existence of many animal species. Compared with last year, changes in climate conditions this year have led to more forest fires that harm nature, people and animals. Elina Avanesian, ranked 51st in the world, started the WTA 500 Series Tournament in Monterey with a victory. The representative of Armenia competed with Italian Elisabetta Cocciaretto, 64th ranked player in the world, and won. The match lasted one hour and 46 minutes. Elena Avanesian's opponent in the second round will be the world's 28th ranked player, Ukraine Elena Svitolina. The prize fund of the Monterey tournament is $922,000. Dear viewers, this was all for today. Goodbye.